why am I fearful of the big life I know I'm meant to live? I'm tired of resisting. So Trisha and I were talking to someone last night as we were leaving, and it's kind of the same thing. Like I, I know I, this was some, this was somebody who kind of wanted to get in the circle last night. Really felt it, but just didn't. And, and I told this person, I've done that a million times. God has asked me to go forward and give a message, and I just I, I couldn't do it. I was shy, or whatever it was. But the next time I did or the next time I did. Ultimately, I got there. Everything is happening in divine order. But one thing about success and prosperity and achievement is that it brings with it transformation, because it must. So often, the structures that stood before have to be done away with in order for the new structure and infrastructure to come in. So when you become successful, booking your clients, famous, You've achieved what you want. You're going to lose people. You might have to move. People are going to think you're weird. Trust me. <laughs> they're going to judge you. They're going to be looking at you, and they're going to be projecting that stuff onto you, and you'll feel that, and you're going to have to learn how to manage it. That's scary. Mm -hmm. It's vulnerable. That's what the fear is. And so the response we are being invited to respond to this by not aligning with all the things that could go wrong, but aligning with the promise of all the blessings that inevitably come when we answer the call. You're only called if you have what it takes to answer the call. Woo. Okay? <laughs> Nobody's asking you to write a book uh, in spirit if you're not a good writer. Uh -huh. They're just not. Maybe channeling and journaling, but they're not asking you to publish a book if that's not something that you can do. And through doing that, you will be so successful. And maybe successful is not money. Maybe it's not fame. Maybe it's people. Mm -hmm. Networking, opportunities, a new location, new energy. So I ask you to be brave. Align to your higher excitement, as Bashar says, which is that which is emerging in you, that you are being called into. You can do it. Just put your back into it. <laughs> okay. Well, this is something I was actually feeling before this question came up. And it was something that I felt like needed to come through for a lot of us here. Because there's a specialness about each human frequency. There's an awareness of each human being that which calls itself God and calls itself love. In that emotion, there's a fear. Who am I to be so big? Who am I to be so compassionate that I see somebody else's bigness and then I feel small in their light? But when you view somebody else's light, you are the observer of that which you are offering a resistance to only if you fear that your light is dimmed by somebody else's. When you compassionately connect with another female, there's a big idea. She is gorgeous. She is amazing. She is powerful. And that bigness puts you in a corner of saying, how do I get to the frequency of that feeling that I am observing? And when we observe it, we ask, who are we to be so wanting? I am wanting to be that big. I am receiving that which I am. Therefore, my desire communicates with love for the female in front of me so that I can offer her the power of me materializing for her to recognize her beauty. <laughs> so when you offer yourself to another female, that is as big and as bright and as powerful as you know yourself to be, the bigness of your light can only be expanded by the one in front of you. Amen. Well, example to that. I have um, been in Sharia for a long time, I've been doing this for, not my whole life, but for a little while now, I feel experienced. But one thing I never felt confident in doing was astrology, was doing charts and, and studying it and talking about it and teaching it. But I just started doing it because I liked it. I didn't expect to make 
a part of my career. I thought, like, you know, I'm a child, that's what I do, right? And I give readings. But I started doing astrology just because I loved it. And wouldn't you know that the most, the most important thing that people, not, I mean, not the only thing, but the thing that has really pushed me to be more open, more connected, and people really see my work is because, is the astrology. Like, people really have been interested in coming out of the woodwork just to ask me to do more for that. And it wasn't an intention. It wasn't like, oh, I gotta be this big astrologer. It was, I was doing it because I loved it. So I did, you know, some things I wasn't so sure of at first, but the thing that I did love eventually became the main um, joy. I still love doing everything else I do, but if you're loving what you're doing, everything else will fall around it. Um, I would take a step, you don't feel that confident at first, but once you do, it, it comes together. Guys, Metatron says, humans play this game called supply and demand. And forget not that it is a game. It is an illusion. It's a toy for you. It is not your master. Supply and demand is not your truth. It's your game. Your truth is the real resource of the universe. universe. It is light. And there is no shortage of that resource. So light worker, be your light. There is no shortage of that resource. Be it. Be it. Immediately, now, in this moment, nothing is being withheld from you. And on the other hand, there is another beautiful message from Divine Mother Goddess. And she says, All of God's children are special and none of God's children are special. That's from A Course in Miracles. Join Trisha Carr and I for the 2019 Mediumship Intensive starting this September 9th. Students of the Intensive will learn how to open their intuitive perception and fearlessly navigate the beautiful world of spirit, communicate with departed loved ones, beings of light, angels, masters, and more. Mediumship is absolutely natural and it's for everyone. Check the link in the description of this video to learn more.